Hi, in this video we're going to commence our exploration of classes within C++ and we'll do this over a number of videos. Uh, and this one here will start off outlining one of the key differences between how classes are implemented in C++ and how, for example, they're implemented within Java. And that's actually going to drive a lot of our later exploration. Beyond this, we'll, we'll also consider how a class is defined within C++ in terms of its syntax and layout and things like that. Um, I'm going to assume that object-oriented programming you're familiar with, you know, all the benefits of it. So none of this I'm really going to go into. So this really is a, a compare and contrast between um, how we can uh, realize and implement object orientism within C++ and, for example, within Java. We'll start off with the with a fundamental difference. Um, and we're going to look at it in this uh, um, uh, slide here. We've got a couple of fragments of code that we'll, we'll delve into in a second. We have an implementation at the top where we're creating an instance of some class. And you'll see the label at the top is C++. And it's true, this is valid within C++. It's not valid, for example, within Java. The bottom example where we're using the new keyword. Now this, again, is labeled Java and it is valid within Java. It's also worthwhile pointing out that it's equally valid within C++ too. Okay, now, what are we trying to highlight here? Uh, you can see this in the importantly bit over on the left-hand side. In C++, classes are value types by default. And in C Sharp and Java, they're reference types. So the example at the top is a value type, the example at the bottom is a reference type. So let's look at the top one first of all. So here we are directly creating an instance of some class. Uh, you can see in line two, we some class is the name of the class. Um, some class small s is the variable name we're given to it, and we're passing in some arguments. So this is analogous, exactly the same as analogous as creating, for example, an int. We could say int a um, and, uh, is equal to four, and that would create an integer called a with a value of four. Created as such is a value type. It lives on the stack, and it's exactly the same for creating a class. There we are declaring it directly. We will create it directly. We'll, we'll have a chunk of memory set aside for holding it, and that memory will reside on the stack. Uh, so it's much the same as an automatic variable we would have within any of our method calls. The example at the bottom is known as a reference type, and it's known as a reference type because we get a reference, a pointer to wherever our, our actual object lives. So in that sense, we're creating two aspects. The new keyword will go to the heap, will allocate a chunk of memory sufficient to hold an instance of our some class. On the stack, it's going to create a pointer to that particular class and we'll then link the two things together. So what we end up with is a pointer to whereabouts in the heap that class resides. Now, in Java, we don't deal with pointers, we get references. Uh, again, C++ with references, exact same notion. Always points to uh, wherever it is in memory that that instance has been created. So it's also, you know, that's where the reference uh, notion comes into it. You refer to it, never directly in Java, always indirectly through the reference type. Whereas in C++, depending on how you create it, you can, if you wish, declare it uh, by value, so you refer to it directly. Now, that's important, and that actually will have a lot of consequences in terms of how we deal with classes within C++. Uh, one of the main ways that it differs is the notion of assignment. And we'll show a few examples here. So, at the top, uh, we have our C++ example, and in the bottom, we have our Java or a Java example, and this is a Java example. So the one at the top is that we are creating uh, line one, some class A. That will create it by value type, so a chunk of memory is set aside in the stack, it will hold A. And in line two, we're doing the same. It's like creating two integers. We will have a second chunk of memory set aside for holding B. And we then say B is equal to A. Now, notionally, that will copy the contents from class A into class B. So we end up with two instances of our class A and B where one assumes the, the data it, uh, contained within each of those classes is exactly the same. Down at the bottom where we're using our reference types something quite different happens. So in line one we're creating 
a new subclass which lives in the heap, we're creating a reference to it called A. In line B, we're creating a second reference, uh, or line, line 2, we're creating a second reference, uh, B, and we're assigning that equal to the object that A points to. So the example at the bottom, we have one instance of the class, we have two references which both refer to the same instance. Now that's a rather key and fundamental difference between them. Um, because in the top example, in C++, we're dealing with the notion of copying the contents of one object into another, not just simply uh, copying or, or duplicating references. What that means is within C++, when we have a look at construction and things like this, you'll find that there are a few constructor types that we don't have in Java that we hadn't needed to be bothered about or concerned about within Java, but we do within C++. In particular, C++ classes, um, they have by default, but we may want to specify explicitly how it works, a copy constructor and a copy assignment constructor. Largely, they're the same things by way of the outcome, but they differ in terms of, of how we do this. So the example given to Bob is a copy assignment constructor where some class B is equal to A. We're using the assignment uh, keyword and we want to copy from A into B. And we'll have a look then at some of the, the complications that this introduces, some of the things we need to be careful about in terms of doing that. Now, that's all to look forward to, and that's what a lot of our, our detailed analysis is going to focus on, that key difference and the consequences of that key difference. We'll finish off this talk just simply by outlining the broad structure of classes within C++. Um, this will be reasonably straightforward because it is reasonably straightforward. You can see in this slide um, the sort of rough convention how you can set this out. If you want to create a class, normally you put the interface to that class in the header file, and then you put the implementation of each of the methods within a corresponding .cpp file. Um, we've got our class name. You've got inside this here two regions, a public and a private region. Inside the public region, you can define uh, your constructors. Uh, you can also see at line six, we're also declaring a destructor. So this is something we haven't had to be worried about, uh, that worried about in Java. So a destructor has, it owns the opposite of the constructor. Constructor is how you put this object together, how you build it up. A destructor is how you safely break it down so the memory can be released. And we'll have a look at some instances there where we will need to define an explicit destructor so we can safely uh, delete, free up objects. Line eight, we got your, your typical way of declaring public data. Uh, line nine, public methods. And inside our private section, we can declare private names and data as, as well. Inside the CPP file down at the bottom there, for each of our methods that we've declared, we want to go through. We're given the name of the class and then the, the rest of the signature, and we're showing the implementation um, of that. So fairly straightforward in terms of how we can set it out. General form of, 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 of a method, you can see the thing here, usual stuff. Um, the only exception to this are our constructors and destructors. They don't return anything. Um, but for normal methods, we've got a return type, we've got the name of the class. Uh, then we're indexing into that based on the method name and the argument list for it. So that's so much the same as before. A little bit of definition, some of which we'll use. So the variables and functions listed in a class, in the class declaration section, are collectively referred to as class members. So if we're talking about class members, we are talking about the data and the methods, the function that make up that uh, class. If we're talking about the data, the variables, we may refer to them as data members or instance variables. So sometimes these are terms you'll see referring to the, the data that a, uh, that a class uh, declares. For the methods, the functions, we can refer to them as method functions or just methods themselves. Uh, so again, that defines the implementations uh, of, of, of those, what, what are the signatures of them, what they are capable of doing. So again, reasonably straightforward in terms of a bit of, uh, of, of definition. Overall, for this short talk, we really just want to introduce it, highlight the main difference to give a breakdown of it. Main takeaway from this, C++, if you think about creating an instance of a class, uh, the default way will give you a value type. You'll get it directly. 
um, not like Java or C Sharp, where if you create a class, you automatically get a reference to wherever that class resides within memory. It seems like a small difference, but actually it will have quite significant impacts in terms of the types of things that we need to, to think about and to be careful about whenever we're creating objects. Now, that may sound like work. It will be work, but it also gives us control and choice and we'll have a lot of freedom when you get into things like move constructors and other things uh, to, to, to make sure we are writing things that are very fast and very efficient. But we'll see this as we go into the, the rest of the videos.